I just wanted to kind of wrap up a bit some of the things that we've been talking about over uh, the last couple of days uh, and uh, both uh, highlight the reality of the situation that we're facing in government and how we absorb a lot of the ideas. So that isn't meant to uh, put cold water on this discussion, but it is meant to have kind of highlight some realistic uh, uh, considerations as we move forward it's, it, with this agenda. But the realism, the difficult work ahead of us, uh, the challenges that we face in bringing forward some of the ideas uh, uh, over the last couple of days and actually making them real in government uh, is the thing that inspires me and ins inspires all of us. If this was all easy to do, uh, it would have been done uh, before. So let me tell you a bit about how we're dealing with the kinds of ideas you've been talking about and the kinds of suggestions you've been making in a real way in government. As you have all said, we are at a really crucial moment uh, in the history of the country and the history of our economy and where our economy looks 10 years from now is going to be dramatically different uh, than it looked at 10 years ago. And this government uh, is absolutely focused on that. So this government's top priority is help and growth for the middle class, which is articulated in a retail way, but in a more public policy wonky way, we know that that means inclusive economic growth and how the benefits of growth are distributed widely uh, across uh, society uh, and how everyone feels they benefit from the innovation uh, that is going on from an aggressive trade agenda, from an open economy. Uh, we all know that uh, if uh, those benefits are not widely shared. Uh, we lose the political license to pursue uh, the agenda. So this government is uh, focused uh, on uh, inclusive economic growth and help and growth uh, for the middle class. And what we have done is uh, taken an approach that's a bit different than uh, previous governments in terms of how we implement um, our priorities. And this government has identified a number of cross-horizontal priorities that it wants to drive over the course of its mandate, and it wants all actors, stakeholders, civil society, think tanks, the private sector, all departments, all governments, to try and mobilize the tools and levers that they have to achieve these objectives. And those objectives are uh, many of the things you've talked about here. Innovation, trade, uh, sustainable infrastructure, effective action on climate change, uh, inclusive economic growth where everyone benefits. You think about those overarching uh, horizontal cross-government uh, priorities, and they're even more than cross-government, they're cross-societal. Everyone here recognizes that all actors have a role to play. Uh, you heard from a number of ministers on innovation and the innovation agenda and some of the plans that are working their way through. The innovation agenda does not belong to Navdeep Bains, it doesn't belong to the Department of Innovation, Science and Economic Development. It is a whole of government uh, effort and it belongs as much to the Department of Environment or uh, Natural Resources Canada or Transport and how they innovate in terms of their program design and delivery uh, uh, with shared goals shared objectives, um, and that is kind of a new world here. We are identifying very big shared goals, effective action on climate change, and asking everyone to mobilize the tools, levers, capacity, intelligence that they have to bear and to bring uh, to achieve those objectives. And that's not just federal government, it's not just provincial government, it's not just municipal government, uh, it is uh, across the board. And so the Prime Minister has articulated these big goals, these big outcomes, these generational uh, uh, projects and ambitions, um, and all of us now are trying to figure out how um, uh, we can mobilize our tools uh, to fit into that. Um, let me make a couple of comments that I think are particularly relevant uh, for this group. Um, what is really cool about the moment we're at, I think, uh, in Ottawa, in this country, uh, is uh, that um, this government uh, is very conscious of the cultural and societal change um, that uh, are going on all around us that are affecting communities and industries and sectors and businesses. And the federal government has kind of been aware of it, um, but is not on a day-to-day -day basis affected by it or threatened by it. But we in the federal government right now 
are saying we need to disrupt ourselves. We need to find different and better ways of doing our business, of delivering our programs, of developing policy. Um, and uh, we recognize that the traditional industrial model of developing policy and developing programs is not uh, conducive to the best outcomes and it's not consistent with the expectations of citizens or the way businesses or not-for-profits uh, behave. So we are in a moment where when this government says, you know, we want to be open and transparent, doesn't mean we're going to get it perfect every time, or we want to be more collaborative, or we want to be a flatter, more nimble organization, uh, or we want to be a more digital organization, or we want to be more results focused and focused on outcomes, and we want to be driven by evidence and evaluation. That doesn't mean that artificial intelligence is going to make policy decisions by looking at uh, evidence, um, but it does mean that these are the things that uh, a modern, successful, vibrant, dynamic uh, organization are uh, going to take into consideration. And so I would just say to the people in this room that we are at a moment where this government 100% believes uh, that we will get better programs, better policies, better outcomes, uh, greater impact. Uh, on Canadians and on the world uh, if uh, solutions are developed and designed openly, broadly, with broad collaboration, harnessing insights and wisdom and data and evidence from all different communities. The idea of the industrial model of policy development where bureaucrats go in, identify a problem, and they do a literature review, and they look at some evidence, and they may do a consultation with stakeholders, and may commission a paper from Canada 2020, and then go off and produce a number of options and do a recommendation and broker with uh, ministers about where the ministers want to go, and then produce policy. Um, that uh, period model of policy development is collapsing. There's still obviously lots of elements uh, of that and there's obviously a role for secrecy and confidentiality um, and intimate discussions amongst ministers and officials about the best uh, path forward, but everyone recognizes that uh, we are going to get better uh, outcomes on a whole variety of issues uh, if government is saying, here's kind of what we think the problem is, here's our data, Here's our evidence, here's some considerations, here's some things uh, that we think um, uh, might work. What do others have to bring to bear on this uh, problem? What data do they have? What expertise do they have? What knowledge do they have? I mean, we live in a systems world where knowledge is highly dispersed, where information is highly dispersed, and everyone recognizes uh, that you know, a deputy minister sitting in a department somewhere uh, does not have uh, a monopoly on the most relevant or valuable information um, to, uh, to affect a decision. So that's kind of the moment we're at. Um, and it's really inspiring, but it's, uh, it's really challenging because we continue to have all these structures that everyone here is aware of about how governments work. And that's not unique to this federal government or provincial governments. That's that's how large organizations work, but particularly uh, public sector bureaucracies have process uh, and accountabilities and silos and layers and all of that stuff. So we exist within those structures, but we are trying to drive um, change and the co-development, co-design of policies and solutions is a, a really key piece of it. I pick up one of the other things that um, uh, that was talked a lot about uh, over the last couple of days when we talked about this being, you know, Canada's moment. Um, uh, this government uh, has made an absolute commitment to uh, collaborative decision making. And you see it uh, in the way ministers interact, in the way it cascades through organizations. Uh, we are much more relently, relentlessly collaborative. Um, and much like the Kitchener-Waterloo, I mean, I think that's a really interesting example about the culture. The culture of what's going on right now in Ottawa is ministers come to the table um, saying, I have programs and levers to help you achieve your innovation. Uh, objectives. You know, I have them at Anarchan, I have them at Environment, I have them at Transport, I have them at Infrastructure. How can I mobilize my tools, my policy levers, my programs to help the government achieve its broader objectives and my colleagues achieve their objectives? Because if one of the ministers is not succeeding on delivering on their mandate, letter commitments, which are all very public um, and stakeholders are engaged with. That reflects poorly on all of us. Um, and so we are at a moment of relentless collaboration and we're at a moment um, 
uh, where this government also relentlessly believes that diversity uh, improves outcomes uh, and uh, solutions. And that doesn't just mean gender or ethnicity or language. Uh, it is perspective, it is professional background, uh, it is training, it is life experience, it is sector. Um, and to many of us, these are commonplace, but they're not how traditionally governments have organized their work. Uh, traditionally, governments have looked for experts in particular areas, and those were hierarchical and linear. Um, and now we're in a period where um, uh, stakeholders, community, civil society, have, uh, have great wisdom to offer, and people recognize that that diversity is going to produce better outcomes. But as I say, um, uh, we live with these structures and organizations. Um, and so I would just want to make a uh, uh, another point, which is we are involved in uh, a really challenging uh, change management exercise. We are involved in a really uh, uh, arduous pro process of culture change, uh, and there will be lots of bumps on the road. Uh, but one of the pieces around that culture change uh, is around results, and so you, know, you heard my job, I'm the Deputy Secretary to the Cabinet for Results and Delivery. One of the things, w what that means is working on that culture change to move the government from a tradition of focusing and measuring on activities and process. Did we do the activities like we said we did? Did we do the process properly? Did we consult everyone we said we were going to consult? To uh, a, a focus on results and outcomes and impact. Um, and the impact is what all of us are here about, and that's what federal public servants and ministers and parliamentarians care about. Uh, no one runs to be an MP or work in the public service because they don't want to have uh, uh, a dramatic impact on Canadians or the world or because they're in it for the money. They want to improve the lives of Canadians. They want to improve, uh, um, you know, they want to reduce poverty. Whatever issues are important to them. Um, but we have a history in all large uh, public sector organizations of not measuring the outcomes, of measuring the activities and measuring the inputs. How much money did we spend? And that's a measure of whether the government cares or doesn't care about the particular priority rather than is the money actually delivering the outcome that we're trying to achieve. So we're in the process of doing that, and I want to conclude with that by, by highlighting that all of the various things that you have been talking about um, over the past two days and all of the programs and all of, uh, uh, you know, the granting councils and SHRED and uh, funding of clusters and all of these uh, various activities. There was a time when, you know, we would keep layering new programs onto new programs. So we're not doing well in science. Let's create a new program focused on science and let's create a new chair. Um, and you know it's possible some of that will continue to happen. But what uh, we are very interested in the government right now is which of these things are having uh, the most important impact on the things that we're trying to improve. Which of these things are having the most impact on relevant, meaningful indicators and outcomes, whether that's you know the growth of Canadian firms or the creation of IP or whatever the issue is that you know from a government perspective, from a political perspective, um, we've decided these are the really key measures of innovation. The measure isn't did we develop an innovation strategy and do people in this room like it. The measure uh, is whether, based on a number of indicators, we are becoming a more innovative, dynamic economy where the benefits of that innovation are spread and felt uh, across, uh, across the society. And so we are going into a results-based world, an outcomes-based world, an impact world where data and evidence are going to be crucial um, to assessing what's working and what's not working. Uh, be essential for resource allocation decisions and integrated formally into the decision making process. Uh, is this thing working? It wants more money. How is that money going to be spent? When do we check in? When do we evaluate? How do we recalibrate? How do we reassess? How do we scale up and scale out the things that are working um, and stop doing those things that aren't having the positive impact that we thought they might? And how do we live within a world of experimentation and accepting that sometimes things aren't going to uh, be as successful? That's the world we're working in. That's where our organizations like this and the conversations we've had are so essential because there are thousands of ideas 
Um, and it's kind of our collective job to experiment with those, explore those, implement them, test them, but make sure we have the evidence base to see which ones are working and which ones are going to really have the impact um, on the things that we care about, like inclusive economic growth that will continue to protect uh, the fabric and uniqueness uh, that, uh, that everyone in this room so loves about the country. Thank you. Thank you.